Hi, my name is Laura Klein, and I am your instructor for English 230 Introduction to Literature. I'm having some YouTube difficulties today, so I'm going to maybe make a shorter post than I would have, but I want to answer the questions on the discussion board that you guys are answering for this week. So I'm going to start with a little intro to myself. I am from Prescott. I moved here when I was five, and I went away to go to college. I went to Pitzer College, which is a small liberal arts school outside of Los Angeles, and I majored there in English and World Literature, and then I went and got my master's at U of A, also in literature, so I have a literature background. It's kind of my thing. Um, and then I moved back to Prescott so that my now husband could go to nursing school here at Yavapai, and we've been married now for four and a half years. We have two pugs. They're super cute. Their names are Egon after Spangler from Ghostbusters and Freud after Sigmund Freud. And they are plastered all over my office. If you come to talk to me, you get to see pictures of my pugs. And we are expecting our first non-fur child, our first baby, this June. Um, I've worked here at Yavapai for seven years. I started teaching composition and TAing for a lit survey class at the University of Arizona when I was a grad student there, and this is my seventh year at Yavapai. I teach composition, uh, and I also teach leadership development studies because I advise Phi Theta Kappa, the Honor Society of the two-year college. If you have questions about that, let me know. Um, and now I'm teaching this Intro to Lit class because it's a class that I saw a need for, so I developed the curriculum for it. This is, um, so it's kind of like my baby. I am really excited to teach it because it gives me an opportunity to give sort of a broad background on literature. This is my answer to number two, by the way. Um, both to give English majors an opportunity to take a class that uh, is offered at some of our state universities, but also to give an opportunity to people who are just interested in seeing sort of a broad um, brushstroke of literature to be able to get involved and take a class also. So my answer to number three about my definition of literature, what I came up with is I think literature is any piece of writing that took sustained attention to produce and that which takes sustained attention to read or interpret. I'm not um, big on capital L literature in believing that literature is only things that are included in the canon or on syllabuses, syllabi, um, at colleges or high schools or whatever, uh, which doesn't mean that I don't like canonical literature. We'll be reading Nathaniel Hawthorne, who's one of the ultimate, you know, dead white guy writers, and uh, he's one of my favorites, partially because I think he's so weird. I think there's so much exciting stuff that we, we read it and we think it's one thing, but it's actually so many things. Um, so hopefully those of you that have read it before, when we read it again, get, get to think about it in a new and different way. Um, you know, I think genre fiction is literature. I think essays can be literature. I think movies, I think, you know, when it, it comes to interpreting text, I think there are a lot of texts out there which are worth interpreting. Um, which which took sustained energy to produce and which takes sustained energy to read and interpret. So that's my general thought. And you'll you'll get to see through this class the ways that I'm interested in the way it, in what we take is what literature should have, which are you know these conventions and um, use of particular devices. And then we have writers who are using and also exploding them, like Ann Carson and. Uh, I, those things are really always exciting for me to read. People who obviously understand what we mean when we say literature with a capital L, but then are taking it and saying, yeah, it's that, but it's this too, and I can be that and also something totally different. So that's something we'll be thinking about a lot through the course of the class. And for the fourth question, I'm going to talk about the textbook reading, because I want to let you wrestle a little on your own with J. Hillis Miller. Um, which can be difficult reading, but it's something that there's a lot of parts of it that I really love, and I'll talk a little more about it next week. But for this week, I'm going to talk about the textbook reading, and one of the things I don't agree with about the reading is that we sh is that there's, you know, sort of like this reading that we do over here, which is the everyday we reading we do, which creates a certain type of literature. It's not that I, or literacy, it's not that I don't believe that that's true. I do, but I also believe that um, 
we can bring the skills we learn from literature to that and we'd be more literate and better off if we were to do that. And I don't think that these literacy skills that we get from reading and writing about literature are can only be learned by reading and writing about literature. I think there's lots of ways to acquire them. But one of the exciting things that it does is, is if you spend a lot of time reading and writing about literature, you get something which I like to think of as the joy of the interpretive mind, which is that you bring the skills that you bring to literature to everything, which makes you more questioning, more more of a deep reader, more likely to provide your sustained attention to something, even if it's something small like figuring out the tone of an email from your boss or your friend or, um, you know, thinking about the content of the news program you're watching or the Wikipedia article you're reading or the blog post. So I think some people find those skills annoying, like I don't want to bring this all the time to everything I watch, I just want to enjoy it, but there is a joy in it, and I hope that you'll learn to, to appreciate the joy in it, maybe, over the course of the semester. It's one of the things I really love about literature. And one of the things I really agree with in, the, in that reading is that discussion is a really important part of a literature class. It's hard to reproduce in the online environment. I'm a big believer in online teaching. I love teaching online, and I also see the ways that it benefits students. Um, but I do worry about not getting enough of the magic of interpretation that happens through discussion in an online environment. So I really encourage you not only to participate in the discussion boards by reading other people's posts, asking questions, making comments, but also by finding some ways to talk to somebody in person about the readings we're doing, whether that's going to the study lounge discussion board and setting up a meeting with some of your classmates or with me, coming to my office hours, giving me a call during my office hours just to chat. Um, or, you know, asking your roommate or your friend or your spouse or, you know, your kids um, to, to read something that you're reading and just chat about it with you. We're reading a lot of short pieces, too. So, hey, read this poem. What do you think of this? Like, this is cool, right? Do you, do you think this means this? Having those kinds of discussions, because that's a lot where, uh, where the magic of interpretation happens is when you're confused and you ask somebody, hey, what do you think? And you're like, hey, I don't think that at all. That's awesome. We think totally different things, and we can both support it. And you learn that through talking about it. So I'll try to provide some opportunities for that, but I also really encourage you to seek them out. All right, so that's my intro post. I really look forward to listening to, watching, reading yours, and I will talk to you again soon.